Kingdom Keepers, Disney After Dark by Ridley Pearson. I'm going to bed, Finn announced, standing up from the dinner table and carrying his plate to the kitchen sink. He hadn't been to bed at this hour since elementary school. Are you not feeling well? His mother said in shock. I'm feeling fine, he said. I'm just going to bed early, if that's all right. Have you finished your homework? Yes, it's done. I stayed after for study hall. You what? She set down a bowl of mashed potatoes and crossed her arms. Finn. She eyed him suspiciously. You stayed after school to do your homework, and now you're heading to bed at 7.15? The night before last, his mother had received a call from her contact on the DHI team, asking if Finn had been to the Magic Kingdom lately. Finn had denied going, feeling awful about lying, but knowing she wouldn't believe him. She'd grounded him. Finn didn't even try to challenge her, and that he'd convinced her of his guilt. If you're planning to sneak out, no way, Finn said. I'm not. I promise. He stepped forward and kissed her. Good night, Mom. I'm going to check on you when your father gets home. Okay, Finn said. Just don't wake me up. Please, he added. I need a good night's sleep. He checked his computer. No interesting email. He debated logging on to VMK and looking for Charlene, but instead he changed into his pajamas and brushed his teeth passing his mother in the hall on the way back from the bathroom. She wore her concern openly. It's only 7.15, she reminded him. We could catch your favorite show. She'd trapped him. This was an offer he would never normally turn down. I'm going to pass, Mom, but thanks. It's a bad rule, making you get approval before going. A silly rule, really. If you, well, if you took a friend to the park well, your father and I, we would understand how you wouldn't have wanted to tell us. Finn considered her an olive branch. Amanda, he said. Her name's Amanda. Relief spread across his mother's face. He feared she might hug him. She was smiling now, beaming. Night, Mom. She looked like she might cry. I'll talk to your father, was all she said. Finn knew he wouldn't be grounded by morning. He shut his bedroom door. If he crossed over into the park, he didn't want to be in his pajamas, so he changed back into jeans and a t-shirt. He lay there for 15 wakeful minutes with the lights out, checking the clock regularly. He tried to relax. Dusk played at the edges of his shades. It felt like the middle of the day. He cleared his mind, dozed off, and finally sank into a deep sleep. You're learning, said the old man's voice from behind him. Finn turned to see Wayne, in khakis and a plaid shirt, sitting behind the wheel of an electric golf cart with the Walt Disney World logo painted on the front. The sky glowed faintly on the horizon. It took Finn a moment to register his location as somewhere in Frontierland, not far from Tom Sawyer Island. You just missed the firework display, Wayne said, stopping at the cart alongside Finn. Park closed a few minutes ago. I love this time of night, especially the music. What music? Finn didn't hear any music and realized now that he'd always heard music in the park. The old guy was a bit daffy. Finn reached out and grabbed the steel bar that supported the cart's awning. He saw his glowing hand wrap around the metal, but could also faintly see through his hand as well. Not only that, but the metal didn't feel exactly like metal. This is so weird, he confessed. Don't fight it, Wayne said. This is probably the weirdest thing I've ever done. And I've done some weird stuff, Finn said. This one time, a friend of mine and I, he caught himself blabbering. Instead, he told Wayne, I found Charlene. I'm still trying to locate the others. It has to be all of you. You understand that, don't you? All or nothing. Youngsters your age, you always think it's all all about you, only you. I can promise you, it has to be all of you. I want to help you, Finn said. You have no choice, he said. 
At some point, you'll understand that. Finn felt the words like drum beats in his chest. What do you mean? You know what I mean. I thought it was a dream at first, Finn said. And now? Now? I don't think so. I don't know exactly what it is, if it isn't a dream. But I don't think it could be a dream. He hesitated and said, I saw the moon. Wayne nodded and crocked his head curiously. Yet something's bothering you. Charlene said, it isn't safe. You basically said the same thing. And yet, here you are. You came back, Wayne said. You brought me back. Did I? Not exactly. This is a two-way street, young man. You're neither hologram nor human. You're something in between, I think. The holograms don't think for themselves, and they speak only what you recorded for them. How much you are one or the other may depend on your thinking, what you're thinking, how you're thinking it. So I'd be careful of what I was thinking if I were you. Finn spotted a large gold bear by the entrance to the jungle cruise. He shook his head to clear his eyes since the bear was walking on two feet, and there was what looked like an oversized rat jogging to keep up with it. Is that? What? the old man said excitedly. Pooh and Piglet. Is it? There, Finn said, pointing. I told you, didn't I? Wayne was quick to lose his patient. I don't see what you see. He sounded frustrated. Pooh and Piglet. Finn was certain now. What are they doing? Walking away from us. Anything else? You're kidding, right? Finn felt like some kind of translator. I told you things are happening in the park. We, you and your friends actually, need to stop them. The Overtakers? Yes. It isn't safe, Finn repeated. No, it's not, Wayne said, agreeing. What's that mean exactly? What did you think of the park as a small child? Magic, Finn said, without a second thought. He still thought of it as magic. Exactly, Wayne agreed. But there are two sides to magic, yes? Good magic is what you're talking about, but there's other magic besides good magic. Black magic, Finn stated. A layman's term, but yes, a darker side to magic that few, if any, fully understand. Do you? No! But Walt did. He wrote about it. He made films, invented characters. He understood its seriousness, its potential for... But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Potential for what? For evil? Let's just put a pin in that. We'll come back to it. Finn climbed into the front seat of the golf cart. His feet disappeared. They weren't simply in shadow. They were gone. He felt a little faint. My feet, he gasped. Wayne explained. The hologram imaging system isn't set up to project to all locations. There are places we call shadows, like dead spots, where cell phones don't work. Inside some attractions, they will be visible. Ew. The DHIs will be visible. Other locations, maybe not. Your feet inside a cart, for instance, he said, pointing. Not so good. You may be able to control this. We don't know for sure. You're the first of your kind. Finn glanced down at his missing feet. It wasn't so bad. Okay, Wayne asked. Okay, I guess. Wayne pressed the accelerator. The cart launched forward. Where do you get your license, Finn said, holding on for dear life. What license, Wayne answered, his eyes sparkling. Four or five dark, shadowy figures streaked across the intersection in front of the cart. Wayne didn't see them. Finn reached over and jerked the cart, steering wheel, narrowly averting the accident. Wayne braked to a stop. You nearly paved those guys, Finn exclaimed. What guys? The... Finn couldn't complete the sentence. Wayne hadn't seen them. Then Finn said pirates. He pointed to the left, but not exactly pirates. They look more like... like what? Well, more like robots, like the life-size pirates in Pirates of the Caribbean. And then Finn realized that wasn't it. They weren't people, but audio animatronic figures that had somehow come alive. Never mind, Finn said, not wanting to sound crazy. 
A group of the figures was pushing a line of small blue cars ahead of them. Finn thought he recognized the cars, but couldn't associate them with any particular attraction. He was stuck on the idea that some of the AAs, but they were only machines, had come to life? Was that even possible? Wayne asked. How many? Five? No, six. Including the guy with the hat. Interesting. What guy with a hat? Finn didn't want to go there. He'd call them pirates, and that was that. You really can't see them? Me? No, I see the cars, but nothing else, Wayne said excitedly. And if you can see them, then maybe you can stop them. Or at least try to stop them. Stop them from what, exactly? Three nights ago, at the end of the Phantasmix show, the dragon set Mickey on fire. Obviously, that's not supposed to happen. Mickey is supposed to win. He jumped into the water. He's all right. The crowd laughed, but they didn't get it. But Mickey could have... Well, he could have... He could have been in serious trouble. And then what? But those are actors, right? The dragon is a machine. An audio-animatronic machine. But that machine malfunctioned, didn't it? It did something that it's not programmed to do. How is that possible? How can that be explained? Finn thought, what a strange old man. Wayne said, you think I'm a strange old man. Do not. You're the chosen leader of the DHIs. Don't question it. Accept it. Without you, Finn, there's no plan. What plan? Finn gulped. Wayne seemed so serious all of the sudden. Finn sensed something behind and to his right. He spun around and saw her. Charlene. His breath caught. She was glowing. A fuzzy light sputtered at the edge of her body and all around her head, like a halo. She wore a white nightgown. Her hair danced in the wind. Some distance behind her stood Philby. He wore school clothes like Finn. Finn recognized him immediately. They were missing Maybach and Willa. Hey there, a gruff voice called out. Finn turned. The pirate in the black hat was addressing him. Me, Finn's expression said, though he kept his mouth shut. Wayne asked, what's happening? Don't get ahead of yourself, he warned. Charlene and Philby moved steadily closer. Wayne appearing distraught, admonished Finn. You must not get ahead of yourself. Finn climbed out of the golf cart. Then, concentrating, he walked right through the cart to the other side. It's all about what I'm thinking, he realized. If I focus on being a DHI, I'm nothing but light. A shimmering Charlene approached the tree. He tried to walk through, but crashed into it and said, How'd you do that? she asked. Why can't I do it? she asked Wayne. Wayne seemed flustered. You all need more time, he glared at Finn. The harsh grinding of metal dragging on pavement interrupted them as the pirates pushed the line of blue cars. The one in the hat, with a broad mustache and a thick black beard hollered out, Ahoy there, matey! Lend us a hand, if you will. Finn stayed where he was. I said, lend a hand, hollered the elaborately dressed man. Behind him, the more scruffy pirates, machines, pushed and dragged the blue cards. All of a sudden, Finn recognized them as the cars from the Buzz Lightyear's ride. He'd been on it dozens of times. I'll pass, thank you, Finn said. Pass? I give ye an order, me boy. Now heave to, the captain growled. An order? I don't think so, Finn replied. Charlene stepped back and dragged Philby with her. They ducked behind the tree. The name's Blackbeard, the man said. His mouth moved like a puppet's. His arms and legs moved stiffly. His eyes mechanically shifted from left to right, their motion disconnected from his speech. Finn felt a spike of fear, but he hid it. Is that so? And I suppose I'm Jack Sparrow, he asked smirkingly. The captain stepped forward boldly, still a ways out. 
is ye now? The pirates stopped their pushing. They gathered behind their captain. Finn counted six in all. They were dressed in ill-fitting costumes. They had scars on their faces and scabs on their hairy legs. They went barefoot, wearing dark pants that stopped at their calves, and a blue and white striped shirts. They weren't humans, though. Blackbeard drew his sword. His six pirates drew knives. They said, lend a hand. You're my conscript now, lad. I'll be obligated if you hove to. You're not ready, Wayne hissed at Finn from the shadows. I'd help you if I could see them, but I can't. Finn felt a jolt of terror, unsure what to do. His legs, wobbly and rigid, were unwilling to move. He figured he could run faster than a bunch of mechanical pirates, but wasn't sure he wanted to test that theory. Besides, he couldn't budge. Finn looked back, four glowing eyes like cats shone from behind a tree, Charlene and Philby. "'What are you doing with those cars?' Finn asked the captain, stalling. "'Think! You might could say I'm borrowing them, laddie, or you might could say that the Space Ranger spin is under repair.' He tilted his head and cast an evil eye in Finn's direction. "'I've seen you before, Jack Sparrow. Now where would that be?' I don't believe we've met, Finn said. He's one of them hosts, Captain, a smallish man with frog eyes called out. The man's right arm continually lifted up and down, up and down, up and down. This was apparently the motion he made in his role in the attraction, and he couldn't stop it. A host, the captain declared. A new ride. Is that what you're telling me? His pirates mumbled. We don't much care for new rides, the captain explained in a dry, cold voice. Don't much care for them at all. Do I like a ride, Finn asked, his voice trembling. I'm just a boy. You're my boy now, the captain declared. Ain't he, lads? His pirates all nodded in chorus. He said to Finn, now, be a good boy and lend us a hand. I'd prefer not to, Finn said. If you don't mind, I'll be on my way. He summoned his courage and turned. Ye don't turn your back on the captain, youngster. I said halt. Finn stopped and glanced back over his shoulder. The captain signaled his crew, and they reacted immediately, like a bunch of well-trained dogs. They fanned out. They were not exactly fast on their mechanical legs and feet, but they were steady and worked well as a team. One of the pirates climbed into the Space Ranger car. He aimed its toy laser cannon at Finn and fired. A bright red pulse of light shot through the night, narrowly missing Finn. He'd ridden the Space Ranger spin himself a dozen times or more. He knew there was nothing to fear. He'd put his hand on the laser's light stream before, and nothing ever happened. The laser cannons were no more dangerous than a flashlight. Another thin red line of light flashed. Again, it missed. But then Finn realized the cars were not plugged in. They were not attached to any ride. They had no power source. So where did the electricity for the cannon come from? As if to answer him, the next pinpoint of light struck his arm. A red bead flickered on his shirt sleeve. The fabric instantly turned brown, then gray, then, ouch! It burned him! Finn leaped out of the way. Hey, he blurted out. He smelled burning hair. His hair. His skin. The laser was real. Another flash. Finn dodged out of the way. He avoided the next few attempts as well. The red beams flying past him like glowing arrows. He danced left and right, his arm stinging. Now the other pirates circled and closed in on Finn, their knives extended. If a toy laser can burn, what is a very real-looking knife going to do? Wayne had warned him that he was half hologram and half human. Only now did he realize his human half could hurt. His wounded arm looked less transparent. All of a sudden, he wondered if his fear made him more human than hologram. He pushed against the fear as if it were trying to shut a heavy door. A gray-haired pirate with a peg leg. Thump. Thump.
thumped his way closer. The circle closed around him. Now Finn could smell the pirates, oily like an old car and faintly electrical. Charlene called out to him from behind the tree. The captain raised his sword higher, trying to follow that voice. Reinforcements, mate! Be ye ready! Two of the youngster pirates closed in on Finn. They walked swiftly but slowly, like a six-foot-tall toy soldiers. Finn circled to his right, away from them. He dodged two more attempts from the laser. One of the pirates was hit in the process. The captain raised his hand to stop the laser assault. The two young pirates, their knives glinting, pressed ever closer. The captain, with one knee cocked, his foot perched on the lead car, thundered, Well now, laddies, serve him up like a fine fillet. Hey, dog breath! It was Philby. He stepped out from behind the tree. All six pirates turned toward Philby at once. With the pirate's attention briefly diverted, Finn sprang for the nearest space ranger car. He grabbed hold of its laser, swiveled, and fired. A pulse of red light shot out. Finn was a veteran of Space Ranger Spin. He winged the pirate in the car ahead of him, not ten feet away. The pirate didn't seem to feel it. He was a machine. Another pirate charged, and Finn shot his knee out, and the thing toppled over. It's one good leg moving, still trying to walk. Finn saw a difference between Blackbeard and the other pirates. Blackbeard had a vaguely human sound to him. Most of the others, all but a few, looked and sounded more like machines than real pirates. Finn sliced and burned right through the peg leg of an old pirate. He too teetered, leaned, and tumbled over. Two down. On the captain's command, his men charged as a unit. Finn aimed for their knees in a brilliant display of gunnery. They staggered. Several fell. The captain ordered a retreat, and Finn held his fired. Blackbeard, his eyes darting weirdly back and forth, reached for, but then decided against the sword that hung at his waist. He clucked his tongue in disappointment. Ye've made a terrible mistake, lad. Me advice for ye is go back from whence you came and take them there other two with ye for your own good. His mechanical facial expression never changed. He made no more threats, not with Finn still perched behind the laser. He simply turned and walked away. He did not run, did not hurry, Finn noted. He headed down the path and a moment later was gone, out of sight. His pirates dragged themselves and their other fallen mates off with them. Finn released his hold on the laser, his fingers stiff from gripping so tightly. His shirt bore a small charred hole. The burn on his arm was now a blistered scab. He'd hoped he might only have imagined it, but no, it hurt something fierce. He climbed out of the car. Way to go, Charlene said simply, trying not to sound too impressed. Philby approached, and Finn thanked him for the diversion. The two shook hands. It felt to Finn as if that handshake represented a pact between them. They... We're in this together now.